All right, let's talk about winter. You know winter, that magical season where the air is so cold it feels like tiny little ice ninjas punching at your face and your car suddenly turns into a math problem? Yeah, that winter. Now, if you live somewhere like Iowa or anywhere with real winter, you already know it doesn't care about your plans. It doesn't care about your mood. It doesn't care that you spent $70 on those heated socks. It's cold, it's windy, and it will make every vehicle slightly worse at being a vehicle. And if you drive a Tesla, congratulations, because you get to see it in glorious color-coded percentage drops on your dash. But EVs use a ton of range in the winter. Sure, that's what everybody says. And yes, it's actually true. But don't worry, today we're going to unpack this winter mystery. We're going to cover why your Tesla loses range, why gas cars aren't exactly innocent either, and what you can do to make it through without sacrificing your sanity or your battery percentage. Let's get into it. Winter range loss is not a Tesla problem. It's not even an EV problem. It's a physics problem because cold affects chemical reactions, air density, rolling resistance, fluids, and even your natural instinct to heat the car to Florida man levels. Every vehicle gets less efficient in the winter. The difference is gas cars just hide it well and EVs show you the math in real time. Gas cars absolutely lose fuel economy in the winter. The EPA estimates a 15 to 30% mile per gallon loss in cold weather and even worse on short trips. Why? Because in the winter, gas cars run richer fuel mixtures, take longer to warm up, they use thicker oil that increases friction, they burn winter blend gasoline with less energy per gallon while often sitting idle while doing absolutely nothing. Sound familiar? The difference is gas drivers just fill up more often and complain about it. So why does range drop for EVs in the winter? Well, first, cold batteries are grumpy. They just are. Lithium ion batteries do not love the cold. When it's cold, energy doesn't move as easily, efficiency drops, and regenerative braking is limited or gone. Your Tesla will actually use energy to warm up the battery pack so it can function normally. That's not waste, that's preparation. In a gas car, cabin heat is basically free engine wasted heat. In an EV, it is generated intentionally, and that takes energy. Cranking the heat up to 78, blasting the defrost, and running the fan at high speeds adds up fast. Cold air is thicker than warm air. Denser air equals more aerodynamic drag, and that means more energy to maintain your speed. And that's why driving 75 to 80 miles per hour in the winter hurts way more compared to the summer. Snow, slush, and winter tires also matter. Snow-covered roads are also like driving through oatmeal. Rolling resistance increases, slush sticks to tires and wheels, and winter tires trade efficiency for traction. They can be worth it, but it doesn't come for free. Finally, short trips are brutal. Every short trip means reheating the battery, reheating the cabin, and never reaching peak efficiency. Five short winter trips can be worse than one long one. Now for some good news. Most winter range loss is manageable. First, precondition while plugged in. Now, if you remember only one thing from this video, make it this. Preheat the cabin and the battery while the car is plugged in. That energy comes from the wall and not the battery. Use scheduled departure or manual preconditioning before you leave. And as an added bonus, you get faster regen and the car feels normal sooner. But does this talk about preconditioning really hold up? Instead of just talking about preconditioning, let's actually test it because this is one of the biggest questions that I've seen every winter. If I preheat my Tesla, how much battery am I actually losing? All right, here's the setup. My car has been sitting outside in the cold and it's been pretty cold outside and we're gonna preheat up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna monitor the starting percentage before and the percentage of the battery after. And I use scheduled departure time and in my experience, it starts preheating about 15 minutes before the scheduled time. It took about five minutes to warm the cabin from cold to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's with no driving, no regen, just stationary preconditioning. At this point, our battery was down just 1%. Now let's continue running for the full 15 minutes, just like the scheduled departure tends to do. Battery percentage before preheat was 55%. Battery percentage after the full 15 minutes of preheating was only 53%. Now I went ahead and waited till I saw a full 3% drop and that took 22 minutes. That's only a 2% drop in battery. 
Here's why this is actually a good deal. That battery drop restores regenerative braking sooner. It reduces energy spikes once you start driving, improves efficiency for the entire first part of your trip, and makes the car more predictable. And if the car has been plugged in, most of all of that energy will be coming from the wall instead of the battery. So here's the key takeaway. Preheating doesn't waste energy. It spends it intentionally so the drive is more efficient, more comfortable, and more predictable especially in the winter. Sea heaters are basically the Swiss army knife of winter comfort. They're tiny, they're super efficient, and they're surprisingly powerful. Instead of turning your cabin into a tropical rainforest at 75 degrees, try something radical. Drop it to 68, turn on the seat heaters, and let science do its thing. You'll be just as cozy, and your battery will thank you for it. And for my full self-driving folks out there, Tesla's thoughtfully included dedicated hand warmers right where your hands go, because apparently steering wheels are now purely decorative, because honestly, the wheel isn't getting touched much these days. Now, another thing that we can do to improve range is slow down. Dropping from 75 to 65 miles per hour can be the difference between arriving comfortably or white knuckling it at under 3% of your battery. Now, we all can't be Kyle Connor from outer spec, I'm just saying, because driving slower matters more in the winter than it does in the summer. Also, navigation isn't just for directions. It tells the car to manage energy, precondition the battery, and prepare for charging, especially before superchargers. When road tripping, make sure you always have your next charge stop somewhere in the nav. The car will do the right thing and precondition as much as needed when it needs to do it. This will ensure that you'll get the fastest charge possible when you actually stop. However, still plan on staying an extra about 10 minutes when supercharging in the winter because of the lower driving efficiency. Short trips are killer for any car in the winter. One longer drive is better than five short trips. The battery stays warm, the efficiency improves. For me, I can't really avoid it. I only live five minutes from work. I do precondition from the wall power in the morning to help, but on the way home, there just isn't much I can do. And I know that's okay because I know when I'm going to get home, I'm gonna walk out of my toasty car and have plenty of juice in my garage once I get there. If you want to take it a little bit farther, another thing that you can do is use chill mode. Chill mode smooths acceleration, reduces wheel slip, saves energy, and is also excellent on snow or ice. That's a pure personal preference. Another thing that you can do is charge a little bit higher. Charging to 90 or 100% before a very long drive is perfectly fine, especially when the chargers are far apart. Use that battery, that's what it's there for. However, stick with Tesla's schedule as much as you can for your daily drive if you don't need the full battery. Now, if you wanna to monitor yourself in your Tesla, Tesla includes an energy trip graph so you can obsess as much as possible in real time. This right here is one of the most misunderstood and most powerful tools in your Tesla, the energy trip graph. It uses your real speed, outside temperature, elevation changes, wind resistance indirectly, heater usage, driving behavior, and it's not using EPA range. This is real world energy forecasting. And that range up there on the top of your screen, yeah, that's pretty much worthless. And I recommend you just switching it over to percentage and forget about it. Inside the energy graph is where the real brains happen. Think of the gray line as a recipe, what should happen under ideal conditions, and the green line as what's actually happening. If the green line stays above the gray, you're winning. If it drops below, you're using a little more energy than planned. Instead of guessing, the car gives you real-time feedback. Watch the trend, don't panic. Your Tesla constantly recalculates all the time. It adapts to speed changes, road condition changes, temperature, elevation, and climate usage. Slow down, arrival percentage goes up. Speed up, it drops. Hit slush or snow, it adjusts. On long road trips, once things settle down, your Tesla's arrival percentage becomes eerily accurate usually within one or 2%. Of course, that assumes the weather doesn't suddenly turn into a Norse apocalypse and you're not channeling your inner Formula One driver because you're gonna miss the next Starship launch. If arrival percentage trends down, slow down. Five miles per hour or lowering cabin temperature slightly, you'll see the results in minutes. Immediate feedback, no guessing inside this car. Next, let's talk about some of the myths that Tesla has in the winter. Myth number one, never charge to 100%. Nope. Charging to 100% is perfectly fine before a long trip, especially in the winter, especially when chargers are far apart. Just don't leave it sitting around 100% for more than a few hours if you can help it. Myth number two, the heater is killing your battery. 
Using the heater consumes energy, yes, but Tesla manages battery temperature, power limits, and long-term health automatically. You're not harming your battery by staying warm. And myth number three, EVs simply don't work below zero. Well, tell that to Norway, Canada, Minnesota, or literally all of Iowa. You never have to worry if your Tesla is not going to turn over and start when it's super cold. That's just not a thing. Sure, range is reduced, but not functionality. And myth number four is you can't road trip in an EV in the winter. Well, navigation plus planning solves this. Winter road trips aren't impossible, they're just honest. You can 100% travel to just about anywhere in a Tesla in the winter. Just plan for a little longer charging stops when you do. Other than that, it's no problem. The hard truth is this. Winter driving doesn't require bravery. It requires understanding, planning, and trusting what the car is telling you. Just plug in your destination and go. Let the car help you with the rest. That said, you cannot change physics. Extreme cold reduces range. It just does. And your first winter you're going to find is scary. Second winter is going to be completely normal. And by the third winter, you're going to be explaining it to someone else below in the comments or online. Winter affects all vehicles. Gas cars lose miles per gallon quietly, burn more fuel, idle wastefully, EVs, show you the math, teach energy awareness, and reward smart planning. Teslas are stable, predictable, and excellent in the snow. Simply put, my Tesla is by far the best winter vehicle I have ever owned, period. Please do me a favor and go down and leave me a comment about your winter driving experiences. I'd love to hear them. And while you're down there, please tap that like button. And if you're new to the channel, subscriptions are always welcome. And if you're looking to pick up a Tesla of your own, and I would highly recommend it, make sure you start that process with a referral link. Use any referral link you want, but if you wanna start that process with iowateslaguy.com, that would be great. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.